today is a day where I get to clean this place up here uh, and uh, in preparation for our the surprise that I have for you guys and uh, guess what guys today we're gonna clean up the entire place here and basically we're gonna make sure that we get room for what we're gonna be installing pretty soon here and uh, they'll be delivering my four post lift uh, that's going to be sitting right in here and uh, guys from here on I'll be able to have the two summer cars be on top of each other here so so that way I can pretty much free up this whole area here for a lot of the work that I do uh, in the process so we can now fit probably up to four uh, cars in this garage as soon as this lift is installed and at the same time guys it'll be a lot easier for me to do all the work that I need to do uh, going forward and that's why I have deferred some of that modification that I've been doing for the Golf R and uh, since uh, we are having the lift pretty soon might as well wait for the lift to be installed so that way it's a lot easier to actually get those things going so anyways guys stay tuned I just did some quick measurement here. Technically, the uh, uh, Pro King 8 that we will be installing here uh, is going to be about the uh, nine feet, uh, less than nine feet, eight, uh, eight by something, um, about eight feet down this way where the marker, uh, where Chester is, and about 14 going that way. So I'll be basically placing the, um, the lift about uh, you know a couple of uh, inches like six inches away from the door um, I will be having the uh, it's the the ramp is basically a removable ramp so I could pretty much have the uh, whole lift be close to the door here um, as much as I can probably about six inch off the door and um, the actual ramp will be dangling in the process and it's a removable so I'll just have to remove it um, every time I lift it up so it's going to be situated here guys uh, it's a uh, perfect space for uh, the lift uh, right at the marker there where Chester is and um, it will be basically going this way so as you can see there's still plenty of room uh, for me to do work here and uh, my little uh, desk over here um, it shouldn't be any problem there um, soon here we'll be seeing pretty much the lift uh, over here so yeah, I can't wait guys, pretty excited and I'm gonna run you through and I'll be doing uh, uh, the install here with the guys and uh, Ross is basically kind enough to send the guys over here to do the install as well in the process including the delivery and so we'll be delivered, be installed and uh, yeah, stay tuned. Awesome, the guys made it in here so they'll be installing the lift pretty soon. Sorry for the uh, wind here. It'll be a little bit windy here, but uh, we'll try to keep the garage door open or close there on the other side so we can uh, minimize the wind because it's a little windy today. The looking guys, man, they work so hard. Here, guys, is uh, we'll be wrapping um, the post here uh, in another video, of course. And uh, the idea is to wrap the, the uh, post to give it a two tone 
and then uh, we'll put back the lifting uh, stickers in the process. So uh, I just wanted to make sure that it, uh, it does match my color scheme on the garage uh, with our black and uh, black and red tone here. So. Yeah, I wanted actually a two-tone, but uh, it came red. So we'll try to wrap the uh, entire post and see how that will look at some point. Well, I managed to get you black top caps. Thanks, man. Black covers, black ramps, and a black jack tray to kind of get a little bit of your black on red going. Perfect. And I brought you some black decals for the backs of the red posts so that they say lift king in black and red. If that's what you want to do, we also have some white ones for you. Awesome. No, thank you. And here's the other accents uh, colors that we'll be putting. Uh, we pretty much have the the side blockers there. Um, also, the caps too are going to be black, so it's going to be nice. And uh, my ramps uh, are black instead of the red. So that would be awesome, man. It's going to be sweet. It's already shaping up pretty nice. That's exactly how I pictured it, guys. How many installations are you guys doing a day, guys? Uh, when we're busy on a good day, we can do three in a day as long as they're all kind of close to each other. Gotcha. What sort of good tips you can give me here on the upkeeps and the whole... Always remember to use your locks. Never leave a car suspended on your cables. It's one of the most important rules of owning a hoist is make sure that that car is always resting on the locks and never left suspended on the cables. Other than that, keep everything lubricated and just remember when operating the lift that it requires your undivided attention. One of the most common issues we have with guys is working the lift while talking to somebody and not actually paying attention to what they're doing and then suddenly things get a little weird. Exactly. Is it important guys to, uh, you know how the garage floor is kind of sloped a little bit, right? Yeah. So do we have to uh, lay, level it a little bit um, or should we uh, like put us some kind of a padding in the bottom to level it or what's the right? These freestanding hoists are specifically designed to be put on uneven surfaces. Okay. Um, the key component is as long as we've got the cables adjusted correctly and uh, the platform is level to the floor, all the locks are going to engage at the same time and that's our, our key factor. Here. Gotcha. Plus you guys have like an extra wide base as well. I remember Absolutely. they're like 12 by 12 by 12 or 12 by 12. 12, yeah. By 12 yeah. yeah. Versus some of the competitors out there is like eight by 10 or something like that, which Absolutely. is, that's, yeah. And the other thing I like about uh, the Lift King products is that uh, the fact that they do have this locking mechanism here where it's like right on um, this, uh, what do you call this track here, right? Instead of yeah, that plate. Yeah, so on our new ones, that's actually a laser cut lock rail instead of individual welded in positions. So okay. we made some improvements on the newer models. This oh, gotcha. a couple of years old. Oh, it is, okay. So I guess get our first beam in. We're we're making mistakes. That's all right, guys.
Those are top caps. They're nice black ones. I'm really liking the, the contrast there. Yeah, we'll also replace these covers here with some black ones. Awesome, thank you. It might be enough to truly give me the uh, what I'm going for. Right? Yeah. I might not even have to wrap this whole thing. Same thing, loud bang. Nice and warm out there today, guys. Yeah, at least the wind seems to chill out a little bit too, right? It is. Okie dokie. Chester wanted to come in here or come out. Well, you bring them in a little bit. I love dogs. Yeah, yeah, but they sometimes uh, get too excited. <laughs> he does get excited, especially when he sees this new toy in the garage. Perfectly, guys. Yeah, it's a great center, max center on the uh, smack center on my door right there, which is really nice. And then I still have plenty of room here to, you know, go around. So. And the best part is those wheels. So if you want to work on something over there. Or exactly. Move, there, move it. Yeah. In, exactly. That's the point. Is that I can either move it on this side to kind of. Um, you know, work on the, even the SUVs, change the oils, it'd be a lot easier now. Installing some parts, it would be a lot easier. Of course, at some point, I, I want to get the uh, the bridge uh, jack there. Um, that's probably the next uh, item that I want to get, so that way I'll be able to work on suspensions and, and uh, as well as uh, the tires. Uh, but uh, definitely, additional investments, right? You'll still be able to jack up the vehicle and stuff with the jack tray that's provided. Yes. But the uh, the, the quick jack makes a big difference. When it, you're, it does, yeah. <laughs> when you're doing a lot of yes. stuff. Yes. So. so I was thinking, debating on probably getting the quick jacks, uh, the one that uh, the one that's uh, you know the scissor yeah, quick jacks that are being. Yeah. Does it work on this? Because I know uh, Tavares, uh in one of the YouTube channel there 
famous Tavares guy, he, he actually, he's the first one that tried um, uh, Caesar Jack or uh, Quick Jacks on a um, uh, four post lift. Yeah. And it seemed to work. So uh, I might yeah, get so one of those. They, they should work just fine in the uh, in the jack tray, like a little scissor jack. And I the see. bridge jack sits just on top of this and it works really good. And you use it in combination with the jack tray. Gotcha. So you would leave the tray at the back end yeah. and have the big bridge jack up front. Yeah. Once you got the vehicle up, like lifted the hoist up, you would slide the jack under the vehicle, gotcha. lift the back end up, set two jack stands in the tray, yeah. come back down this end, pick it up. Now you got all four tires in the air and it only takes two minutes. Gotcha. But uh, Princess Auto sells some little uh, scissor jacks. They're like the, the style they had in like the 90s Chevy pickup trucks for the yeah. spare tire jacks. Yeah. Um, those ones work really, really good in the jack trays because they're super low profile. Gotcha. And they've got a three quarter inch nut on the end so you can buzz them up with your gun. Oh, nice. I'll take a look at that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm a big Princess Auto guy. I, I do a lot of my stuff there uh, from them. So maybe someday they can uh, sponsor me because I go there too much. Right. Or, man, I buy so much stuff from Princess Auto. I mean, they're. It's, it's technically our. Uh, what do you call it? It's the uh, it's a candy harbor... store for adults. Exactly. The Harbor Freight of Canada, that is, right? Yeah, pretty much. I bet yeah, you I they. I try really hard not to go into Canadian Tire because I already own a whole aisle in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all the sockets, all the wrenches. Yeah, Canadian Tire is pretty good too. They have lots of stuff in there, of course. Especially if you're going to buy it at Christmas and it's all on sale. Yeah, no, that's that's just the only time I w when I buy there, even it's on sale. One of the common things that a lot of guys will do, you're probably gonna wanna do this because the Volkswagen's super low. Yep. If you cut these off so that they only stick up about an inch or two above the runway here, gotcha. they still function as a bump stop, so yep. you're not gonna run off the end of the hoist. Yeah. You're not gonna hook any of your lower spoilers Especially or your bumper or anything. And lower it even more, right? Absolutely. You guys gotta be careful on that one. I might actually, for the meantime, I might add one of those blocks, the, the rubber blocks there. Yep. They just kind of stop me where Absolutely. I'm supposed to be. For the time being, I do like it high too because for safety, and for that reason, you know, like yep. the SUVs and yeah, they're there for a reason. That's for sure. Yeah. So those are the cable that basically. Yes, sir. Oh, That's what this everything. Yep. Gotcha. Through my shadow, through the sun rays, and. The Here, so it's gonna be tucked away. Uh, there's the adapter there that you could get basically from Ross. So that's going to be a nice addition there to kind of tuck that the motor away in the process to have lots of room on this corner. And allows this to stay as tight to the wall as possible. Exactly, so it gives us that possibility of having it closer to the door and closer to the wall. Minimize space in a small three car garage. Hold me close till I get up. Time is barely on our side. I don't want to waste what's left. The storms we chase are leading us. And love is all we'll ever try. So we just got the uh, tank, or what do you call that? The this reservoir? Is our power unit. Gotcha. Reservoir is all off at this point. A brand new motor. We should probably warn him about loud noises for his videos. <laughs> no worries. No worries. No worries, man. I'll forgive you. If you guys are watching Torque Test channels, it's all about the Ugga Yeah, that's right. 
like to picture this guy's hard at work. So that's what you guys get. So this is the anti-wear 32 hydraulic fluids that you need for for our uh, reservoir here. So in your average tire shop where their lift goes up and down, you know, a hundred times a day kind of thing, we recommend they change the fluid once a year. Once a year? Once a year. So, I mean, for how often you're going to be using it. Yes. When it turns brown or black. You will notice. It. Yeah, definitely. So there's a, there's a, should be a drain somewhere then? There is a drain plug on the bottom of that jug. Okay. Um, then Personally, I wouldn't use it. I think it's uh not the fastest way to do it. I would just take the jug off the motor. It's easier. And set the jug on the floor because that way this filter and everything will have a second to kind of drain into the jug. Okay. And then you can just dump everything out and replace it with some new stuff. Gotcha. There's our plug. Uh, 110? Yeah. Yeah, this is a 110. Plug. Yep. Replacing our cap here to give it an accent, like I said. That's looking sharp already. On our newer models, we have a vent line that's attached to the other end of the cylinder. Okay. Um, you don't have that, so this isn't gonna do anything. Just don't worry about that. All right. Keep the empty pail for doing oil changes. Use sure. Oil. Oh yeah, that's perfect. I don't have to keep running in um, you know every little liters that. Absolutely. I just drop mine off at the fire department. That's what I do. Yeah. That's what I do. And so having this, then I can pretty much fill it up first. Oops. Great how you can position it wh whichever you want. Yeah, I kind of figure having it will make it a little easier because you're a little crowded. You guys do this quite a bit, I can see. Having one guy lifting that thing, I don't think I can handle that, man. It's because I'm tall, too. I'm, that's, I'm, I'm pretty lucky, because he can't quite do it like this. It's hard, man. Having yeah, That's pretty heavy, too, right? Along the way, melodies we haven't played. No, I don't want no Time to prime. So the hydraulic system on this is self-purging. It's a single acting hydraulic cylinder, meaning we're only pumping fluid into one end of the hydraulic cylinder. So any air that gets trapped in the system will automatically get dumped back into the tank. Uh, anytime you do a complete stroke, you'll never hear it purge again after this though. Nice. 
So, right now you can hear four individual locks clunking. Once uh -huh. you've got this all set up, you're going to hear them all clunk at the same time. Gotcha. Nice. A good uh, six uh, feet up? Uh, not quite. Well, I'm six okay. foot three, so. Gotcha. <laughs> Be perfect for me, being yeah. a five, six. I got lots of room in the middle. Um, Jeff, where did our handles end up? Are they still in the truck? Lock handles? Uh, lift king uh, hoist. Always remember to give yourself four feet on either end of the lift, otherwise you're not going to get your last couple of components in. <laughs> good advice. Very good advice. And by the way, guys, anybody that's buying uh, a Lift King product, uh, Ross has an amazing video how to on his channel. And uh, yeah, you guys could pretty much get the whole nine yards that uh, this guy has been doing here in the past half hour or so. And if you guys have any questions or concerns about building your lift, you'll be talking to me. My name's Ty. Yeah, that's definitely Ty right there. And, uh, and, and Jeff, that's right. When we built the house, uh, basically here guys, I uh, purposely got the builder to put in the side lift or the high lift doors with the uh, lifters uh, on the side there and how you could tap the, uh, the door pretty much all the way up there, uh, leaving like almost uh, two to three inches uh, of the ceiling there to give you plenty of room to get your uh, small car up top and be able to have another car on the bottom. So. Plenty of room guys. I got about uh, a shy of 11 feet up and uh, that's more than enough. Even a 10 feet uh, ceiling there would probably do well, but uh, just to make sure I had about 11 uh, on mine. Finding life along the way, melodies we haven't played. No, I don't want no rest. Echoing around these walls, fighting to create. here for, to connect the locks from front to back is uh -huh. so long and in multiple pieces when you pull down on the lever the rod itself will get a little bit of twist in it okay and then what happens is the front end opens really good and the back end doesn't want to open quite as far because it loses a little bit of the the action in the twisting of the rod okay so if you set the first two set screws mm -hmm. set the last set screw here mm -hmm. and leave this guy loose and get one of your buddies to half cock the locks at the back end. When you go and you tighten all this really tight, it should twist everything back into a horizontal position. Uh -huh. And that's gonna give us a little bit of counter twist in our system to make it so that our locks open perfectly. So you see how they come down nice? You got like a two inch gap on the sides of the post. Perfect lock. Nice. And you can see them throughout too. That's the awesome part of it, right? Absolutely. Jeff, well, you're a couple of loose top caps. Do it. 
gonna come down quite a bit quicker once it's got the weight of a car on it and once we've gotten the air out of the system. Okay. If it is persistent, uh, persistently slow once you put a vehicle on it, give me a call and I'll walk you through how to make that adjustment. It's really, really simple. We can speed it up a little if we have to. Sounds good, Ty. Generally, we don't let customers play around with that adjustment too much because the faster things move, the faster things go wrong, right? Yeah, so. that's true. Yeah, you don't want it to whoop all the way down, eh? Absolutely. <laughs> Time for cable adjustment. So I'm gonna show you how I do this too, because uh, once a year you should check your cables on the lift. Um, every cable on the lift is a different length. Okay. They are gonna stretch a little bit over time, but they're all gonna stretch a little differently because they're gonna be a different length. Okay. So for example, let me just get this lined up. For example, this post here, this cable comes off the post, down and around a pulley and just goes straight onto the end of the hydraulic cylinder. Okay. So that one's only maybe 15, 20 feet long. Pretty short, yeah. This guy here though, comes all the way down, goes all the way along there, comes all the way down here, and loops meets... all the way back, and oh, then attaches wow. to the hydraulic cylinder. Gotcha. So you're gonna find the long cables will kind of stretch and bounce back. Yeah. The short ones, if you stretch them, they kind of just stretch. Okay. So, but they are gonna make some adjustments over time. So how we do that is I always start at the power unit post, and it doesn't really matter which lock we're lining it up to, but I make it so that this lock mechanism is actually flush okay. with the uh, bottom of one of these locks. Okay. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk around and check the other ones. So this one here you can see is about a half an inch low. So we're just gonna throw a pair of ice grips on here. This is how we're gonna get all our locks to work at the same time. Oh, okay. By getting our cables equalized. And we're just gonna bring this corner up a bit until that's flush. I see, right on the uh, yeah. the, the latch there. So now, manufacturer specs, let's keep it up here. Uh, say that we're allowed a half an inch difference in the locks mm -hmm. from the front to the back when the hoist is loaded. Okay. The reason they give us that is uh, weight distribution on vehicles. Gotcha. Your cast iron big block Mustang, where the motor's hanging a little off the front end here, is gonna stretch the cables a lot differently than say a Volkswagen where it's like Super 50, light. 50 yep. kind of balanced yep. and stuff too, right? Yes, so. yes, you're right. A bit more 50-50 um, distribution there. Absolutely, whereas some of these cast iron big block muscle cars are oh, yeah. 2,000 pounds more in the front end. Exactly. So how do you know if it's uh, it's sag? So once that lock is kind of away from... No, you're just once a year, line it up to the bottom of that lock position. Okay. Power unit and just walk around and take a look and you're gonna be able to see how much they've changed. Okay. When I leave here today, oh. they're all gonna be exactly the same. Okay, perfect. doing a little bit of weird things. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, if you had something really heavy on here and the cables need to be adjusted, you would kind of notice the handle would move twice. Yeah. And that's the back locks and the front locks clicking in at two separate times. Okay. So, and they'll sound different too, so. I'll show you in a sec what happens. Okay. Close this door in a minute.
for you guys to come out here to do that uh, small service, how much would it be? Uh, 179.95, I believe, is our uh, come out and service. Gotcha. That's before uh, parts and, and everything else. Gotcha. You just close this other door here so that yeah. way you don't get Perfect. There's too much sleep. wind going on. See how that goes. Okay, right, I'm ready to go through some basic lift operation stuff with you. Okay. This is my first uh, four post. Okay. So uh, on a four post lift, the cables do all the lifting. Okay. Okay. The hydraulic cylinder is physically pulling on those cables and lifting the car into position. Okay. On a two post hoist. Those cables are just there to equalize the hydraulic system to keep it in check so that one side doesn't climb faster than the other. They don't actually do any of the hard work. Okay. So these cables do all the hard work on this. It's really, really important that we make sure we're not putting any extra stress on them by like leaving a vehicle suspended on those cables for any kind of period of time. Mm -hmm. Cables are only designed to lift a car up and into position, and then we're gonna set the lift down on the locks. That's what secures us in place. Gotcha. Okay, so as this comes up, we're gonna hear the locks clunk into place. So we're hearing one good clunk now. As those cables start to stretch, you'll actually start to see the receiver make four individual clicks or two clicks or you know, depending on which cable is stretched. So, if this was the height we wanted to store the vehicle at, we're gonna listen for our clunk. We're gonna stop. And you can see right now, we're actually up above this lock right now, right? So, we need to lower the lift down onto the locks. And then we're gonna hold this for an extra 10 seconds. Okay. That 10 seconds does two things for us. One, we can see now that these cables have completely slacked out and there's no weight resting on them. So we know they're totally good. The other thing, let's say uh, your cables have stretched a little bit. Yeah. You heard the clunk, but only three out of four of your locks engaged. One of them missed. In that 10 seconds, you're gonna see one corner kind of continue to travel down while the rest of these slack out. If that happens, don't panic. You're just gonna lift it back up. Flicker into the lights, eh? Give this a flick. Try it again. I see. If the problem persists, call me on my cell. We'll okay. diagnose it over the phone. I'll get you to send me a couple of pictures. If it's something I can have you fix really easy on your own, I'll get you to do that. If it's something I gotta come back and do, I'll, I'll come right back out and we'll do it. Thanks, Ty. No, I gotta no. get your number then after this. Absolutely, I'm out of business cards today, but I'll give you my cell number. Okay. So, And all the customers get my personal cell number. I answer my phone pretty much 24 hours a day. So. Thanks, man, I appreciate it, Ty. All right, so to come down now, we have to lift it up off the lock, mm -hmm. okay? So we're gonna lift it up. Now, one of the most common issues we've had with guys over the years is they'll only open this lock just enough that this one lock is open. But that one over there is still inside the post. Yeah. Right? So when you're opening your locks, pull down all the way, and you'll be able to see the locks in the far end too, poking out under the cross. Yeah, okay. I can see that. So hold your locks all the way open, all the way past this bottom lock, and use your red lever here to release the hydraulics. Now, we've had a couple of guys that have wanted to hold the locks open all the way to the floor. Mm -hmm. It's very important that, oops, after we get past this bottom lock, mm -hmm. we're gonna let this lever go because these lock mechanisms hang under the cross beam here, yeah. there's a potential that you could actually set the lift down onto the tips of those locks if you hold this all the way to the floor, right? I see. So once you're an inch or so past that bottom lock, let the one lever go. Okay. Any questions or concerns so far? Uh, not so far. I'm glad that I'm actually taping this so that way I could actually use it for I, I do give guys a lot of information pretty quick. So. No, it's awesome. Because then, you know, one, 
uh, some of our subscribers here will benefit from it. Second, it definitely benefit me in the long term because I do refer back to some of these videos to, uh, you know, get some info, right? Absolutely. Awesome how to there. Um, little things to kind of watch for on your yearly maintenance. Check all your little 10 mil nuts and bolts and stuff like that. These components are in motion. So, I mean, they they do have a tendency to kind so of work themselves them loose. Yeah. So make sure all those are snugged up. WD-40 inside your posts on these white blocks. Yeah. Um, what happens is you get little flakes of powder coating build up on those Teflon blocks and then okay. it gets powder coating on powder coating and it gets yeah. squeaky and choppy. I see. WD-40 seems to rinse all that out of there really well. Plus WD-40 on your cables as well. Really, really good for the life and longevity of your cables. Okay. When you're going to lube your cables with some <laughs> WD-40, if you lift the lift all the way to the very top, 90% of all the cables will be inside this runway. You can just spray down a rag and walk back and forth a couple of times. I see. Good tip. The steel jack tray in the middle there is rated for 6,000 pounds in the center. So you can put scissor jack, bottle jack, we sell airbag jacks, whatever's gonna work best for you. Um, Princess Auto, like you said, has some really good little scissor jacks and stuff that'll work awesome in there. Gotcha. I'll definitely check Princess Auto then. It's also on Teflon blocks as well, so it slides back and forth really, really easy. Okay. Keep that in mind when you're jacking things up on the jack tray, that that thing is not locked in position. It slides, so yeah. don't lift super, super high. Okay. It just got crazy windy out there. It remotely. is. It's so windy. We live in a windy city, so. It's not as bad as Lethbridge, that's for sure. <laughs> okay. And I mean, we could actually come like an inch or two closer to the door, but I think, I think we're actually in a pretty good position right where you're at. Yeah. So I was just saying to you here how, how bang on I am on my measurement. Um, right there, there is my marker. So. These are just your drip trays. Everybody seems to forget. It doesn't matter if you got a Honda Civic or a McLaren. Your exhaust system and your AC condenser are the two things that are going to leak the most on the car below. So always keep that in mind. Doesn't matter how new your car is, they all leak. Makes sense, makes sense. Better be safe than sorry, that's how I, uh, how I see it. Absolutely, and your exhaust system with that little weak holes and that rusty water dripping on the car below, that's the worst. Uh, that's yucky, yeah. Okie dokie, so, the assembly is complete. What we're gonna do, we're gonna do the same on all four corners. So we have four holes on the cross beam. There's one here, one here and two down on the other end in the same position. We're gonna slide the caster underneath and onto the cross beam. Slip it around the post and under the post pins. And then we're gonna pin it to the cross beam if I was a little higher. Pin it to the cross beam. So just imagine we've done this in all four corners. Now all we're gonna do is lower the lift. It's automatically gonna pick itself up off the ground. Nice. Casters are rated for the capacity of the hoist. So uh, you can actually roll this thing around with a car on it. Your garage is not really gonna to work too well because you got a little too much slope, slope on your Slope going on, yeah. But you could still move it around a little bit. When you end up with your rubber pads under here, we're gonna mm -hmm. use the casters to kind of sneak them under there so that we don't have to like lift anything awkwardly or do any of that. So Makes sense. Just lift them back up and that'll set everything back down. Time to get the new decal in. Just brushing it up a little bit. Oh, they're coming out nicely.
still I get out.